Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make a healthy lifestyle possible. I'm Fred Zucker, your host, coming to you from the campus of Parker University in Dallas, Texas. Our special guest today is Dr. Ray Tuck. Dr. Tuck, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me here, Dr. We're glad Tuck. to have you on the Parker campus. Yeah. And we always ask our guests, our visitors, especially those who are with us for the first time, to give us a little bit of background about their career and sure. how they came to be with us today and just sort of the, the way things have gone for you so far. Absolutely. Well, you know, I grew up in, in rural Virginia in the southwest in the mountains. A um, little town called Blacksburg is where I live now, uh, which is about 30 minutes away. There's from a college there now, right? Just a little That's college yeah. called Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, we were just talking about the Hokies. Mm-hmm. So it's a go Hokie deal. Yes, sir. Uh, we have to go Hokies there. So, but it's... So we lived there. Um, uh, I actually, uh, my father was a chiropractor, and so I, I, I uh, jokingly say I got to go to chiropractic college twice because he was, I was seven when my dad graduated the first time, and right. then the second time I went, I had to take tests. Yeah, that's which, right. <laughs> go to class. Yeah, right. That was easier the first time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but then I graduated, came back and worked with him for, for several years, uh, ended up um, actually buying two of his offices. He had several offices, mm. and, and uh, from there we ended up kind of growing. Um, he, unfortunately, we lost him about 10 years ago yeah. uh, at a very young age, and so uh, we ended up merging his practices in with, with, with ours, and, and we kind of grew from there. So we actually run a group practice uh, with about 10 different locations in southwest Virginia. That's great. Ten locations. Yeah, about 14 doctors at this time and a great group. I mean, I'll tell you, I'm a blessed man with my team. Well, I went to your website and saw the, the group that you have working with you, a very distinguished group. It's yeah. really outstanding. Well, yeah, but they, some, some of us need more uh, work than others on my pic- I, your graphic design. But. Yeah, but it's good. It's good. <laughs> I recognize your picture. I was talking about me, of course. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Well, one thing you haven't mentioned is the... Um, remarkable success you have had representing chiropractic and serving the profession. And currently you're the, the chair of the Board of Governors of the American Chiropractic Association. I, is that, do I have that correct? Y- y- yes, sir, you do. I currently sit as the chairman of the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my uh, a cohort uh, is, a, is the president, Dr. David Hurd. Yes. And, and him and I have uh, worked together on some big projects trying to really, to be honest with you, to really... Uh, uh, really make sure the ACA is, is staying relevant in today's world and really right. being here for our doctors today as well as your future uh, doctors that are here on campus. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Hurd was here when we had a, uh, a meeting of a lot of the leaders in chiropractic back in January of this year, mm-hmm. 2017, to talk about the upcoming legislative session here in Texas. Mm-hmm. And I know that you're aware of what we were dealing with and yeah. what Dr. Morgan was dealing with almost upon his arrival yeah. as president of Parker University. He said, by the way, we have this legislation thing coming yeah. up. Would you take care of that for us? Yeah, because that's right. It could affect all of chiropractic. Just wanted you to know that. <laughs> Put that on your agenda. That's right. Which he did. Uh, to his credit, uh, he really was uh, a spearhead of the effort to make sure that chiropractic was protected mm-hmm. in Texas and thereby for the entire country. Yeah. Well, and you're right about that. And of course, you guys are very blessed to have Dr. Morgan here. Absolutely. I mean, he is. He's, he's an great inc- leader. incredible person. I've known him for years. And and uh, so you guys are very blessed. And I'm glad he was able to be such a help in that. And y'all did an awesome job. Well, we, we did it. We had a lot of help nationally, internationally to make sure we had the resources we needed. But the, the, the battle continues. Mm-hmm. That was a major battle. But the, the campaign goes on. Mm hmm. Because there are many things that we still have to deal with, but now we're in a much stronger position Mm -hmm. as a result of legislation that was just passed recently. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you're here for a special purpose. You're here to talk with our students, the student group of ACA. Yes, sir. Which is great. We have them here, and it's so good that you could come down and speak to them. Yeah. What's your impression of the students are coming along now oh. in that group? I, I, I think we have wonderful students here. Yeah, well, you know, I think I, I can say that for a lot of my colleagues, too, you know, it seems like they're a lot smarter than, than when I was in school. <laughs> they seem to be getting smarter to me, too. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, but, yeah, you've got a, a great uh, crew here, and, and they're very uh, – what I'm impressed with in some of the question and answer session that we had is how in tune they are with what's going on outside right. of, of the walls of your school because – when they get out, you know, they're going to want to uh, uh, not just uh, serve their patients, but also be successful at w- what they do. And, right. and uh, so they're very in tune. I was very impressed with that. Well, they they were uh, very instrumental in helping us with the legislative issues mm-hmm. we're just speaking about. 
We had about 160 to 175 of our students who went wow. to Austin as part of the, the Texas Chiropractic Legislative Action Day. And uh, they fanned out over the entire capital to talk to and interview and lobby their representatives to make sure they knew about the case for chiropractic. Right. And I think they learned a lot. I was yes. with a group, and, and you're just being in the Capitol, it, it's sort of overpowering. But our students did well. We had staff. We had faculty. We had alumni there. We had about 600 people wow. representing That's chiropractic great. that day. So I think that gave us a real strong push. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's so much going on in healthcare these days. The, the landscape is changing as we sit and talk today. Mm -hmm. And from your vantage point with the ACA and your long experience in Virginia, just uh, what's your impression of how things are unfolding? Yeah, you know, it's and that was actually the theme of, of the talk that, mm -hmm. that we had today with the students. It really wasn't hardcore about the ACA, but about what's going on out there and the opportunities. I, I personally believe right now is one of the greatest times to be a chiropractor. Absolutely. And, and, and the reason I think that is because when you look at a lot of the transition in healthcare that's going on, they talk about something called the triple aim. And the triple aim is at its simplest form is they want patients to have a great experience, they want to get great outcomes, and they want the, the, their, their health care dollars to be used as effectively right. as possible. Right. And, and one of the messages I, I talked about this morning is, is do you want to tell me some, a, a group that could more own that? And we, we, we're very well known that patients, uh, patients love their chiropractors. We get great results, and we're very cost effective in That's those. Right. So, so really, it's it you know we're, it is a great time, and and uh, data is 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 the today's new uh, uh, interpreter of information, right. and and yep. the data is coming in showing that 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 we're we're great at these these different areas. That's right. So it's it's really uh, I think a very unique and special time uh, that that you know if we can really you know work together, we can really make some differences. Not just in our own lives, but in our, more importantly, in our patients', patients lives. lives. Well, there's this whole group of uh, people coming of age and hitting retirement. They're called baby something. Yeah, right. Baby ba ba bo boomers. boomers. That's it. And I think that's another reason chiropractic yeah. is in such a, a fortuitous position because mm -hmm. the baby boomer generation, they want to stay active. Mm -hmm. They're willing to to invest in resources to help themselves stay Absolutely. active. Absolutely. So I think that's another great signal for us. Well, and it is, and in and, and a lot of times, you know, I, you know, one of the things that I was taught uh, many moons ago is that every patient ha is the CEO of their own health. That's right. You know, so Should they be. get and they get to choose their leadership team of their health, right. right? So they want their they want the best dentist, and they want the best primary care doctor, and they want the best chiropractor, and they may have a lot of other things they want on their team, right. with the ultimate goal of hitting their health care goals. That's and right. so when you can really show that, hey, look. You know, people are more active. They're more mobile. They're, right. You know, you're enhancing the quality of life. Now, maybe we've exactly. got to change some of the, the, the way we deal with some of the legalities and the, the, the logistics of health care in terms of reimbursements and those kind of things. I think if we can keep the patient focused in there, mm -hmm. I think we got some pretty special times ahead. We do. No question about that. Something else that's facing us as a nation is the opioid epidemic. <clears throat> we had uh, General Becky Halstead here mm -hmm. last week doing a podcast with us, and she uh, filmed a public service announcement as well. She's a great representative. Yeah, she is awesome, isn't she? Works with the foundation. And again, I think that's a, a wonderful opportunity. And chiropractic is, again, perfectly positioned to counter the opioid epidemic that we're experiencing right now. Yeah, well, and, you know, one of the other roles I, I, I or other hats I wear, really, another yeah. role. There are many, I, I, there are many. Yeah, um, is I'm actually on our, our uh, board in Virginia. Uh, it's a statewide board where I, I'm the only chiropractor on the board, and and the rest of them are either medical doctors, podiatrists, or and uh, osteopath, right. and, uh, and then we have some public members. But the governor in Virginia came to us and said, "Look, we are not only is the national crisis here, but we're having a serious crisis in Virginia, right. and we need this taken care of." And as a result of that, they put some stuff where we, as a board, put together regulations in the state of Virginia, it was emergency regulations that'll be hopefully permanent next session next year, where how are we going to deal? And, and one of the conversations that came up right there was first thing, first step is non-pharmacologic, non-opioid therapy should be considered long before opioids. Why? Exactly. Now, that doesn't mean that maybe there's not a patient or two that needs it. We're not Absolutely. trying to, to, to say that. But on the other hand, we got if we can take some of these these 
chronic pain patients and prevent them from turning to, to addictive syndrome patients, right. which is what happens. And, and I, you know, what we talk about often is there's a spectrum of care mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. It starts, maybe starts with an ice pack and right. ends with surgery and opioids, yeah. long-term use of opioids. And chiropractic has an opportunity to own this little area. That area right there at the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Where, you know, maybe we don't bat a, a, a thousand percent or, or get all of them, but if we can divert 70 percent of them or even 30 percent of them. It's a huge win. It, it's, it's, it's a game changer in the That's opioid right. crisis going That's on. right. That's right. I just think, again, chiropractic, I believe, is at that tipping point from mm-hmm. all these things we've been talking about. And it's exciting to be part of that right now. It is, isn't it? Well, you mentioned that your uh, your work on the Virginia Medical Board is the only chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Tell us a bit about what you see as the future of integration with all the different health care providers. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you asked me that because I think, you know, even when you look at Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, you know, one of the big things that's transitioning is a team approach to care. Right. Okay. Uh, that's kind of where the concept of something called affordable care organization or accountable care accountable organization, care. ACOs, came from. But so we're no, no longer going to have, if you've got back pain, you don't go to the orthopedic or the neurologist or the chiropractor, but you're going to a team. Right approach where you have those people all on. Now, it doesn't mean, for example, in our clinics, we're proud to be chiropractors. We are, we, we only do chiropractic in those, mm-hmm. but we work in a, in a neighborhood version of that where we work with right. the primary care doctors. And so we have a patient, we've treated them for two weeks, they're not responding like we have. Maybe we, we co-treat with another provider. And I go back to my analogy earlier, we all have, we're all the CEO of our own healthcare team. Right. And what do I want when I've got a, when I'm CEO of my team, I want to make sure all my leaders are working together yeah. with my goal in mind. That's right. And I think every patient has that same concept. And so I think when we look at, you know, with the new policies coming down, it's going to be so important that we're staying in, in touch. And that doesn't mean we dilute who we are and what we do. No. It just means that, that we need to, that our patients want it. They deserve it. Right. And we should definitely be, be a part of that, that, that health care team if one of those things fits in the, into where we're at. Right, right. Now, again, I think that's part of what's happening with the changing landscape. Mm-hmm. There's much more acceptance of that team approach mm-hmm. because it makes sense. It's just a, a realistic thing to do. It's much more cost effective. Absolutely. The patients are going to be better treated, better served, probably in a much more cost effective way mm-hmm. as well. Well, you take, and I'm sorry to interrupt no, you for you a second, right but, but you take the reality that an MRI is going to run you anywhere from 800 to $1,200. That's right. Okay. If two weeks of chiropractic care is going to run you maybe, what, 400 maybe a, a bit more here and there. Right. So if you can maybe even just divert a third of those patients from getting an MRI because you've got response, because they're a responder to care. Right. You've just saved significant amount of funds. Significant funds. Yeah. And just and you multiply that by thousands. Millions. Millions. Yeah. And, and, and then you add in the fact that the carriers now are starting to realize this too. So they're no longer worried about some of the old stereotypes. It's about right. who can get our policyholders, our lives, they call it, mm-hmm. you know, uh, better, quicker, right. happier, right. more effectively for the most economical for the most economical man. All that is in play. And Dr. Tucker, we are thrilled that you're here at Parker University. You were in the vanguard. You were a leader in doing great things for the profession kind of you in, your, in your practice as well. So we are thrilled that you're here. And please come back. Well, I, I hope so. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the, uh, the hospital. Y'all have treated me so great. So thank well, you. We're, it was our pleasure. Yeah. Please tune in again for more To Your Health. We'd love to have you come back and visit with us again. We talk to other leaders like Dr. Tuck, and uh, we'd be happy to see you again. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>